Good morning, New Beginnings Wesleyan Church. I'm Chelsea. Hey, I'm Johnny. And we're excited to see you this morning. We just want to welcome you to our online service. And uh, it's just nice to be able to have a way to be able to come together. And we just want to start this morning off uh, with some announcements. Yeah. Um, be kind of good. Just a couple of things. Uh, most of you already know that we have a prayer time at 7 o'clock on Tuesday night. We also have a Bible study 7 o'clock on Thursday night, and those are on Zoom. And so you can see the links below. I won't talk more about them. Most of you know if you don't have any idea about those or that's new to you, please send us a message. We'll tell you all about it. And don't forget, we do like to do a hangout after church on Sunday. And frankly, it hasn't been heavily attended, and that's okay because we love one-on-one -on -one time, but we sure would like to see a lot of you out there. And so please check out the link right now. Uh, it is for the Zoom hangout and the connection information. Um, come hang out with us after the online service so we can say hi and just uh, get caught up with you. By the way, I want to wish you a happy 4th of July weekend. I know you're watching this on July 5th. Could not find a red, white, and blue shirt, so we're going blue and white as close as we got. Um, Chelsea's frames of her glasses have a little bit of red so that we're stretching it out right there, but that's, that's what we got. So that's, uh, that's what we got going on for online stuff. I uh, hope you can join us in one of those uh, options there. Yeah, and so we just wanted to talk a little bit this morning about some different ideas on how to be able to connect, because we, we do. We want to connect with all of you. Um, we know that this COVID time and this separation, it just feels weird. It just it feels off. I know there's a lot of angsty feelings going on, and uh, our desire is we want to be able to connect. And so there's some ideas on how to do that. We have our, our Zoom uh, interactions which you know they're there if you don't want to leave the house uh, but we also want to start talking about providing some ways to be able to connect um, so some thoughts are having a Bible study at church and and connecting that way we would love to have other ideas on what to do with that as well and so with that if you would be interested in doing an in-person Bible study uh, would you please Email us, call us, text us, just let us know or put a comment in here if you're watching on Facebook. We would love to be able to start to plan that, organize that, and get together because I know I miss all of you um, and we would just love to be able to di dive deeper into God's Word and just connect that way. So if that's something that you would be interested in, please just send us a message, all of that. We'll put our numbers in the comments below. Um, and just reach out to us. Uh, and if you're just missing us like we're missing you, give us a call. We'd love to talk. One of the things we miss a lot is the opportunity to pray with people about things. And our Sunday morning prayer times have always been very special for us at New Beginnings where we get gathered uh, corporately in prayer. And so uh, we know some of you gather on Tuesday nights and that's awesome. It's so great in person. One of the things about this online service that's still great is that we get a chance to spend at least a little time in prayer together, even if we're distant. So this morning... We want to pray um, specifically for those who are sick. And it's no surprise to you and to us, there's a pandemic going on. And in our area, things are growing. Uh, we have 11 people in the hospital right now. And we lost a person this week uh, that passed away on Saturday. And so this morning, really want to lift up the family of the, of the person who's uh, passed away on Saturday want to pray for those that are in the hospital that are battling this right now and really pray for the general health of our community and our nation as we continue to battle this. So that's our specific prayer that we would just invite you to join with us as we lift this up right now uh, to Jesus. Lord, uh, this is the strangest time that I've ever lived in and I know most people can say the same thing, Lord, that this uh, is so unusual what we're dealing with with this virus that is so um, contagious and uh, deadly in those who are um, a little up in years or have underlying conditions. And Lord, this weekend in our area, we lost somebody who wasn't that old but did have underlying conditions. And God, we pray right now that you would bless the family, that you would be with them in their time of mourning, that you would give them peace right now, that you would help them to walk through this as you help all walk through things through calling your name. Lord, I pray that you would bless that family. Lord, I ask that you would lift them up and give them um, a sense of peace in this time and help them through this. Lord, I pray for each and every one of the individuals that is in our hospital right now that is, uh, that is so sick that they have to be in the hospital. Lord, I ask for forgiveness of... Um, of, of sin for each and every person, Lord, that maybe hasn't asked for it in your name. 
I ask, Lord, that you would uh, just heal and lift people up and that you would uh, reach them in a new and special way throughout this. For the well over 100 other people, Lord, that are sick in our community at home quarantining right now, I ask that you would just bless them and uh, strengthen their systems so that they would be able to get through this, that they would uh, be healed and recovered quickly and not be spreading it on so that we can get a better grip on this thing that we have to deal with. Lord, I ask you for help with our spiritual health. God, right now, it is a very trying time on all of our, uh, on all of us, on everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, uh, what you do as a job, what is it, your position in our community. Lord, this is a trying and, and very um, tense time. And I ask for help with, uh, help with our mental health, help with our spiritual health. Lord, I ask that you would bless us and help us out, Lord. Um, this weekend where we celebrate independence and in the background you might be able to hear uh, fireworks going off. Lord, I thank you for the blessing of being able to uh, freely seek you and worship you in our country. And Lord, I ask for your blessing in this time. Please bless this community. Please bless our health. Please bless those that are very sick right now in your name, Jesus. Amen. And I'd like to add just, this is such a stressful and hard time right now. And I, I think it would be fair to say that everybody is just living in a state of up, ups, upsetness. I don't even know if that's a word. Nobody's happy. It's, <laughs> it's really how it feels. And just want to give that reminder that, you know, Jesus gives us the command to love above all else. We're to love God and we're to love each other. We don't have to agree on our feelings. We don't have to agree on how things should be done. We don't, we just don't have to agree. But what we do have to do is be thoughtful and kind of one another. And we may disagree with how some things gone, but that shouldn't stop our words from carrying kindness and thoughtfulness. And I know my spirit has been low, uh, just with a lot of frustration and just feelings that are so out of control. And, and I know I have to remind myself that my responses should I should be more thoughtful in my responses right now. And, and I know there's been times this week that I've struggled with demonstrating kindness and thoughtfulness to others. And, you know, if we have a difference with somebody, go prayer. Pray over it. Give it to God and lead with that kindness in our tone and in our thoughts. Because through all of this, we are supposed to be that representation of Christ and His love and His grace. And so I just challenge all of us. Maybe you're feeling like I did this week. Maybe you had moments like I had this week where kindness wasn't my first instinct. I just challenge us all. That's where we need to go with this. You know, when we walk out of this, who do we want to be? Do we want to just be right in what we think? Or do we want to be the demonstration of kindness to God? And being that demonstration of who He is to everybody else because we chose love and kindness even when it was difficult. Um, and so that's my conviction this week that that's where I need to go with that. And just in that challenge out to everyone else as well. Along with prayer, I would really encourage you just to continue to praise God. And so we get an opportunity to do that this morning. For those of you on the online service, you get a special treat this morning because Brian and Mary are leading us, but they're on vacation this week. So the in-person crowd on Sunday is not going to get to enjoy them leading. So please enjoy. I'm going to put it over to Brian and Mary to lead us in worship right now. Good morning, family. Good morning. We want to welcome you to our worship set of this online service. And uh, we want to say happy 4th of July to everybody, you know, and we celebrate our freedom today. But as Christians, we celebrate freedom through Christ, you know, that has done the work on the cross to be able to free us from being slaves to sin. And uh, I, by the way, I'm Brian, this is Mary. And uh, we just want to welcome you and, and, and a shout out to all our veterans those active and retired or, you know, we just want to say thank you so much for your service. Thank you. And, um, From the bottom of our heart. Yeah. <coughs> and so, and today, we're, we're going to be doing three songs today, so if, if, if you want to, feel free to look them up if you don't know the words. Uh, the first song we're going to be doing is I Exalt Thee. The second song is Love Came Down. Man. Yeah. And we're going to finish it up with uh, Be the Center. So if, if you feel like it, 
pull up the words, you know, and, and, and join us in worshiping our Lord and Savior today. And we just, uh, we just love to be able to be here to, uh, to worship the Lord, to lift up the name of Jesus, to exalt the name of our Father, and um, understand that we need Him so much, especially right now, as the church is hurting. You know, we, we must rise up together and, and, and announce that we are free and we are not going to be controlled. You know, we, we serve a higher power. Yeah. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. Amen.
that we created. The Father and the Son both came up with the solution of the Son leaving His place next to the Father to come down to show us, to remind us of what His sacrifice to, to get us back was. You know, and I have to constantly remind myself of everything that He's done. My, sometimes my mind can't fathom it. You know, and this new life that he, had, that he has brought me into, you know, and it's because love came down and rescued us and freed us. Today is a day of freedom. Today we celebrate freedom. And as Christians, we celebrate freedom through the blood of the Lamb. Amen.
came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. And I am yours. I am forever yours. Mountain high or valley low, I sing out, remind my soul that I am yours. I am forever yours.
Jesus on the throne of our heart to be king to be the lover of our soul and we want to thank you all I'm feeling much better now Amen. I just want to say if Jesus isn't the center of your heart isn't the center of your life choose to give him your all today cast every care don't hold on to one but every care upon him because he cares for you Amen. and he loves you Amen. unconditionally and no he's always there he will never ever leave you nor forsake you Amen. and he will give you joy everlasting that will flood your soul Amen. and give you such a peace that passes all understanding in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus well Amen. folks we just want to say happy 4th of July again and we hope you all have a, a great day. Thank you for letting us worship with you. And we love you. we're going to pass this over to our Pastor John. Amazing Pastor. We love you. Amen. God bless. Well, that is so great to have Brian and Mary uh, leading us in worship. Like I said, special treat for the online crowd today. Uh, I, my name is Johnny Burke, and uh, I got to see you earlier with uh, my wife Chelsea as we got to share some announcements, and I uh, just really want to wish you a, a happy 4th of July. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the background you're going to hear some booms and firecrackers at some point. There goes one. I don't know how well it comes through on the camera, but uh, uh, Independence is raining down in Marysville right now, and so it'll probably come through on the camera, and so uh, we will deal with that. I want to share some questions with you that we've been asking for months now, because it is our desire that as believers in Jesus Christ, that we are growing in that relationship and that we are not just a Sunday club get-together thing, but we are growing in our relationship and sharing it with others. And so there are some questions we have been encouraging you to ask yourself every time we get together and open up the Bible. And the first question is this, what did I hear in the scriptures today? So I'm going to read primarily out of First and Second Timothy today, because Timothy is who we're going to be talking about. If you hear a verse that you haven't heard in a long time or brand new, write it down. Second question is this, what did the Holy Spirit say to me while the pastor was speaking? That's not necessarily what did I say while, the, uh, while I was speaking, <laughs> it's what the Holy Spirit said. In other words, if I say something and the Holy Spirit says to you something totally different, write that down. The Spirit might be impressing something on your life that needs to take higher precedence than whatever we might be preaching on Timothy today. Or the Holy Spirit might be speaking to you through the example of Timothy and his testimony. So that's the second question. Third question is, what am I going to do about it? The Holy Spirit is impressing scriptures and things on your life that need to be done, changed, addressed, etc. What are you planning on doing about it? And the last question we would ask is, how can Chelsea and I, as your pastoral team, help you with that and whatever the Holy Spirit's impressing? So keep those questions in mind. We've been asking them all year long as we desire to grow closer to Jesus 
and bring others to him. We want to grow in that relationship, and we think those questions are very important. So with that, we are going to continue on in our testimony series today, and today we're talking about a guy named Timothy. Now, I have mentioned many times, if you've been watching us online, that, that we... A lot of times when we talk about testimonies, we talk about someone's all the way from their before meeting uh, God all the way to their legacy. And today, Timothy, we're going to talk a little bit about his beginning or his before and his legacy, but mostly about his legacy and mostly something specific about his legacy. So I've been trying to ask a trivia question every week to keep people on their toes and engage as much as possible. And the question this week is this. Timothy, the guy we're talking about, how many times... Is he directly quoted in Scripture? Is it three, one, or zero times that he is directly quoted in the New Testament? All right, write down your answer. We'll get to it here shortly, I'm sure, as we go on to Timothy. So let's talk about Timothy. What do we know about Timothy? Well, one thing we know for certain is that Paul, that's right, the Apostle Paul, the one who was Saul and had that dramatic and life-changing experience with Jesus on the road to Damascus, who became Paul, who became the apostle of the Gentiles, who became the voice that, that brought Jesus to the people outside the Jewish faith in that time, that man had high, high regard for Timothy. And we find out about it in a book called 1 Timothy. And you might think, well, that's ironic. Is this written by Timothy? No. 1 Timothy is a letter written by Paul to Timothy. And there's a second one, too, called 2 Timothy. We'll get a little bit into that in a couple minutes here. But here's the, th the thing. 1 Timothy starts out in verse 2. Paul says this as he's addressing his letter to Timothy. He says this, I am writing to Timothy, my true son in the faith. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. Paul describes Timothy as his true son in the faith. That is lofty praise. That is really elevating Timothy to more than just my co-worker and co-laborer, my person who believes in Jesus, my, my true son. Paul is really, really giving Timothy some, some high props here and saying, boy, this is, this is something. I mean, and the reason why is because Timothy was obviously something very special and Paul realized it. He's very special in his faith and very highly thought up of. And we first meet Timothy um, back in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 5, is when we stumble upon this guy named Timothy. And this is what it says. Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 5. Paul went first to Derbe and then to Lystra, where there was a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, but his father was a Greek. Timothy was well thought up by the believers in Lystra and Iconium. So Paul wanted to, them, him to join them on their journey. In deference to the Jews of the area, he arranged for Timothy to be circumcised before they left, for everyone knew that his father was a Greek. Then they went from town to town, instructing the believers to follow the decisions made by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in their faith and grew larger every day. What a start to hear about Timothy. A young believer, young disciple, his mother's Jewish, his father's Greek. He is the first multi-racial or multi-ethnic, you could say, depending on how you want to define it, believer that we know of. Because up to this point, we've heard about Jewish believers. We've heard about Gentile believers. Now we meet a man who has a Jew and a Gentile as his parents. And Paul addresses that and says, well, you've got to get circumcised to help out down the road. Let's deal with that. But he's well thought up of. His mother's a believer. We find out later on in Scripture his grandmother was a believer too. We find out a lot of things about him. But Paul wanted him to join them. There was something special about Timothy. Something very, very special about him. And he was well thought up. And he was obviously well thought by Paul. And that's why we find out later Paul calls him my true son. There's something very special. He is highly, highly thought up. And so we learn a little bit over him. Then, you know, we hear, Paul even talks about a little bit later on in the chapter that there was prophecy spoken over Timothy and that, and that he was you know, going to be doing some very big things for the Lord. And we hear about Timothy many times in the New Testament. Paul addresses the letter to the Philippians, the Colossians, Philemon, and 1 Thessalonians says, this is from Paul and Timothy, or Paul and Timothy and another, but Timothy's with him and is part of all these letters that are being sent out to the churches. And it's amazing because when you think of Timothy, you kind of can't help but think of legacy. He had a legacy to start that was he was well thought up of. And then he had a legacy of being side by side with Paul on these missionary journeys. And he had a legacy of being highly thought up of by Paul. 
Legacy is one of the two things I think of when I think of Timothy, and, and he worked side by side with Paul. The second thing I would say about Timothy today for us is that he was teachable. And you might say, well, how do you know he was teachable? Well, what did Timothy say that lets us know he was teachable? I don't know. Timothy's never directly quoted in the New Testament. That's the answer to your trivia question. Not one time do we actually hear Timothy say his own words in the New Testament. First and Second Timothy are letters from Paul to Timothy. All those other letters Paul wrote with Timothy were instructing the church, but it was Paul speaking and Timothy was with him or writing for him. We don't hear any words from Timothy, so how can I make a claim that Timothy was teachable? Because Paul wrote him these two letters. And Paul says this in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 through 19. Paul makes a very interesting statement to Timothy. He says this, Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they help you fight well in the Lord's battles. Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their consciences as a result, and their faith has been shipwrecked. See, Paul, in the very part of this front part of this letter, addresses Timothy and says, Hey, you've already been prophesied over, but here are my instructions. In other words, Timothy, I'm giving you advice on what to do. You don't give advice in a letter to people on what to do unless you believe that that person is going to receive that and use that. And Paul is sharing with Timothy, hey, I've got some things that you need to know about. You've been prophesied over, you're going to do great things, but this is what you need to do. I think highly of you. You've been my companion in ministry. You've been getting all these things all along, but you know what? You need some more instruction because you're still young in your faith. And you might say, well, how do we know he's young in his faith? I mean, he, he said he was a young believer when he came to Paul, but then he did some missionary journeys. I mean, is he still young? Yeah, he is. Because in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, Paul actually says this to Timothy. If you look in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 through 12, he says this. Teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. See, more teaching. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers, and teaching them. See, Paul is saying to Timothy, you're still a young guy, but don't let that discourage you. Live your life out through your example, through your testimony. Show them that legacy you've been building and continue to be teachable. As I'm teaching you these things, you teach others. But when you're doing all these things, make sure that you are uh, letting people know that it's the way you live, your faith, your purity, so that they can see and so they won't put you down because of your age, but rather they will look at you and realize that you are still learning and growing and they can still learn and grow as well. Legacy and teachability. Two strong, strong character traits from Timothy, a man we never hear a word out of. Paul tried to sink a lot of things into Timothy, especially in 2 Timothy. That, that second letter, he really packs a lot, and it is so chock full of incredible quotes. But I'd just like to camp on two today. From this man whose testimony to us is his, his legacy and how he lived his life and his availability of being teachable, we should focus in on a couple of the lessons that he was able to learn before Paul was no longer able to speak in his life anymore. Let's jump into 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5-7. through 7. Paul says this, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that the same faith continues strong in you. That is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands upon you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Have you heard that verse before? That God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity? It's been used a lot lately. As we're dealing in, as a society with this pandemic, there's many who say that, no, the Lord hasn't given us a spirit of fear, that we need to go out and face this thing head on. Now listen, people look at this verse very differently right now. 
There are those who are saying we need to charge out in the streets with the power of God and not be fearful. I would share with you my thoughts on it there because it says here, He's not giving us a spirit of fear and timidity, but that of power, love, and self-discipline. For me personally during this time, I am not afraid of getting a virus. I believe very wholeheartedly in Jesus Christ and where I will go should he allow me to get sick and if I was to pass away. And I'm not living in fear that anybody could give it to me and then I'd pass it on to anyone at any given second. I'm not quaking in my boots all the time. But what I am living in is the power of love and self-discipline for myself right now. I love people. I love you. Those who are watching out right now, I love being with you. I love, I love preaching and teaching with you. I love praying with you. I love sharing jokes. I love uh, uh, just sharing my toys with you and comics and the things that I collect and just sharing life. And I love you so much that I'm living the power of love right now and I'm doing all these things through self-discipline to try and mitigate the chance of passing on a virus to you should I catch it. I'm not living in fear. I'm living in the power of love and self-discipline just like Paul taught Timothy. Others right now would preach out of the same verse and say we need to go headstrong and not worry about mitigating factors, that we just have the power of the Lord to protect us. I don't know who's right, because so many scriptures, when we look at them, you can read them two different ways or sometimes more different ways. But what I do know is that we need to be living in the power of the Lord and not our own power. It's a great lesson for all of us. If you've never heard that verse before, I hope it blesses you today. Here's another powerful verse that, that Paul teaches that you may have heard before. And we find it in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's verses 30, excuse me, verses 14 and 17 in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul says this to Timothy. But you must remain faithful to the things that you have been taught. You know that they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the holy scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us what to do right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. All scripture is used for teaching and preaching and rebuking and correcting. Have you heard that verse before? Paul is saying, look here, Timothy, you've been raised in the scriptures from childhood and they have served you well. Don't forget them. Keep using them every day. And not just one or two here and there, but all of them. Because all of them can feed into your life to help you to teach, to preach others. It can help to correct issues in your own life. It can help you to correct others. It can help all these things because God's Word is the power that can change our lives. And more importantly, the power that can change our eternities. Paul knows that Timothy is something very special. He's always been highly thought of of people. He's been raised from a youth in the scriptures by his mom and his grandma. He's gone on missionary journeys. He's got quite the legacy. And Paul knows that he's teachable and still growing in his faith and continuing to share it with others. So he gives them all these lessons. And I would highly encourage you to read through all of 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy if you can before our Thursday night Bible study. And catch a great verse that you really tie into with Timothy and share it with us at that time on Thursday night at 7 p.m. But as we go forward and we celebrate the independence of our country, and I'm sure you can hear all kinds of fireworks on this on this online video, I would just recommend to you, let us praise the Lord for the independence He's given us to celebrate Him in our country. Let us praise Him for legacy of someone like Timothy and a teachability, and let Him help us through His Holy Spirit to establish our own legacy of faith and our own testimony of being teachable so that we can teach others. God bless you on this 4th of July weekend. I hope you are, you are safe and hope to see you all soon. Check us out with the Zoom Hangout. Love to see your smiling face. Goodbye.